Good evening, sir. Uh, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to firstly to welcome the writers and professors, the high ranks from the Arab world today. Uh, firstly, before I start, I would like to speak about and before to speak about them, I uh, apologize that because, because they came directly from traveling to traveling again from Arab and Western companies up to Dubai and from Dubai who came here to Abu Dhabi. Firstly, and this apologize for them, sorry. Today I have three of the, the writers, the very famous writers in the Arab world, and we're going to deal with uh, several uh, topics and we have some questions to them in the Arab region. Today we are going to deal with this in the literal way more than political way when we deal with these points in this place as a politically and the other authors and the writers. Right now in front of me I have like to introduce our guests and Professor Dr. Mohammed Al-Mansi Kandil. He was born in Egypt, in Mahal al Kobra in 1949. He studied in Egypt and he graduated as a physician in 1975. After that, he worked in the countryside in several hospitals in Egypt. He worked as editor, and after he left the medicine, he worked in the Al Arabi magazine, and then he left to Canada. He wrote shorthand stories when he was students in the university, and he got the acknowledge, acknowledgement awards in 1988. The fracture of the spirit, one of the most important works for him. Samarkand, Moon on Samarkand, and a cloudy day in the Western region. When he reached the international awards for the uh, Arab stories as Booker in 2010. Dr. Kandil has issued several books about the kids' literature and stories of the heritage also. Once again, he mentioned and uh, he wrote several scenarios of the cinemas. Welcome, Dr. Kandil. The other one was our editor, Mr. Rabai Al Madhun. He was born in Majd Asqalan in 1945. No sooner that he left Asqalan and he went to Gaza Strip after Israel declaration. He continued his studies in Egypt, and after that, he was dismissed because of his political uh, trends. Actually, since the 80s, he was working in the press field in several Arab magazines, and he is an editor of Middle East magazine. One of his very famous stories, a lady from Tel Aviv, uh, that it reached a good location and it is in the same time is issued in English translated by Professor Aliot Kola from Georgetown University. Also it will be translated into Italian language. Welcome Mr. Rabbi Al Madhun. Finally, at last but not least we are going to speak about a person, a very famous person. His name is Mr. Abdur Ibrahim Abdul Majid. Mr. Ibrahim Abdul Majid, he was born in Alexandria in 1946. And he has got graduated from Literature and Faculty of Arts, Philosophy section 1973. And Many novels has been issued for him. The most important novels for him is uh, Anbar Birds. There is every day called Friday in a week. 
many novels has been issued for him and he has been rewarded for encourages rewards. The most important one was Najib Mahfouz for American from an American University in Cairo in nineteen ninety six. Alan Let me start today and what I want to start with let me open the the way for the audience to give questions to the visitors and to participate in this event. Let me ask, firstly, I take it from the, as a translated from independent newspaper, that it was written here, one of the press men in the independent newspaper, the fire appears to be broken out last night near the Mubarak Robbers Stamp National Democratic Party headquarters. A crew was imposed and first reports spoke about troops in the city. A rich, very classical coffee. It's a very small restaurant in Talat Harb Square. Then we have seen the writer great Egyptian writer Ibrahim Abdel Majid was there. As, as we have met uh, Tolstoy, the person called Tolstoy, taking his lunch in this very breaking out, he said, astonished, and he said, we don't have any answer from Mubarak till now. So, and nothing happened. So we believe that the people will do it. They will do it. And after that, everybody was tearing because of the gas. And these very memorable screens and scenes, it occurs movies rather than the real life. That our speaker right now is going to, to tell us about how did he, how did he meet these people and how did he feel. Good evening, everybody. Actually, the speech of Lord Vesky makes me very anxious. You know, on Friday, Everybody, since 28th of January, I'm very sorry because of this. Uh, sometimes I feel very tired and very passionate. To the, it was abnormal day when you went all in the uh, Tahrir Square. We were walking the revolution with the people over there, not not in the front, but we were in the rear, and many many people of writers were there. And many names, uh, very famous names were there. So we have faced a lot of uh, gas pumps and we were crying and we went to the coffee to wash our faces. And we tried to, to drink Pepsi or we, we got, as we have get uh, informed from the Tunisian people and Robert Vesky came inside and we sat in the store. We sat already there in the restaurant. After that, we, he went and we went. We were very happy. Just not, not only me, but everybody recognized that this day is very, very important day in the humanity. All of the people in Cairo, Egypt, all of the people in Egypt, all of the youth around that, they were moving. And even the, uh, the troops, Security, security, central security troops try to kill and try to bomb, but nobody can do anything. All the people try to go to the Al Tahrir Square, every every street, or from every way. But the most important thing, they never come inside this Tahrir Square. We tried, and you remember many times, one of the officers, I met him, I told him, "What are you doing? Why you are here?" It's, it's because we, we will feed, we'll defeat you. We will get the victory and you never come over us. He said, I, um, I can't do this. I have just investigation, I have just information to do. And the weather was just white, smoky white and cloudy day. And all, all the pumps was expired. Yes, every pump was expired because of the very, very bad to the people, and it's poison smokes. And they were walking from street to the other with the youth. Once, we came inside the area called Maruf. That called Maruf? 
near to the Tahrir Square. My office is here, is there. And we got again the poison gases. I went to, to take a break. One of the one of the battles were going up there, and I found all the people around myself, and the police people around myself. We came inside the building and we closed the door, and all the windows broken down, and the glasses and the armies tried to break the glasses by their guns, and the first time I can see. The criminals, the killers, the, the killers of the criminals who are from the Ministry of Interior. Interior, we have the uniform, the officers and the soldiers, and the secret weapons, who is a civilian people who works for the Ministry of Interior. They had, uh, we can say, if they had a long uh, weapons and also Nights, my wife opened the door once we, after we ran out, uh, after half an hour, we opened the television and we sp spent a long time, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon. We have seen all the news and all the channels say the same news. Okay, all the news says it's a very bad actions happens in Cairo. It's never, never happened. As for my experience in Egyptian life, and political life, and the bad governors of Egypt. And we know that this is a code from the Ministry of Information and Ministry of Interior. And after that, the police will dis disappear. And all the people will come. Exactly, it happened. And I, since I was there, and Mr. Andil also was a young man, and he's still a young man, in 1973 and 77, I, in the day of Sadat. I remember that I went out from the house and I saw a lady and I saw people and all the people around ourselves and controlling the streets. We saw the criminals who are working with the police, the killers and the people who are governed by Jamal Mubarak and the ministry and Ahmad Ez and everybody who's there in the power. We have seen all these newspapers and the channels, try to remember, try to remember these names, Ahmad uh, Gobels al faqi or Anas al faqi the person who tried to kill the people. And I spent 13 days or 14 days in the Tahrir Square, saying from 3, 2 a.m. And I go to sleep with my friend, two of my friends in his house, because my house is there. It was very difficult to leave the area. Then I saw very, very difficult, uh, difficult situations and conditions during the days after the revolution in Egypt, and especially in the Friday night after the escaping of the police and the security forces. We have seen the snipers on the top of the Ministry of Interior and also on the top of the, of the mosques and the top of the Ramses Halton hotels. They were shooting. And with laser, they shooting all the people over there, the killers. And we have seen a lot of people were killed, more than 40 people in front of my eyes. Everybody runs away. All of the people who disappeared and they gone away and comes again to the square, Tahrir Square is the location. And the snipers spent a lot of time and killed many, many people. And the army came after that in the Fridays. All the youth, when the uh, youth, the people said the army and the people are one hand, and they came up on the tanks, and everybody takes hand with the soldiers in the army, and it's Friday. The National Museum in Egypt, they were broken out, and all the people tried to defend it, but some people came inside and tried to pick it up. And uh, many, many people of the Egyptian people try to protect this museum. They try to, to look to me and they remember who is that person. Maybe they see, saw me in the picture, so my picture in the newspaper or somewhere. When I spoke to the youth people and the young men, and they, 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 try, they try to support you, and his face is completely burned up, and his clothes was dusty and very poor, and he defends, the, he defends only the museum. Do you know what you do 
why you are here? He said, I'm coming to protect Egypt's history. And he nothing, he has nothing. He has nothing at all. He, believe me, he's just protecting Egypt's history. And unfortunately, many stalls, many, many things, uh, unfortunately, three officers, they broke up and they come inside and they, they destroyed and they, they were picked up. And the people, there's, there's young men already control them and hold them up and pick them up to the police stations. I would like to inform that the people who call for this revolution, the very, very educated people, they are not ugly people. And one of them is Khalid Saeed. Uh, the 6th six, uh, six of April groups, several groups invited yes, for the revolution, especially Khalid Said group. And uh, now I give the chance to my friends to speak. I would like to come back again to this point. And because you have sent this one, mentioned this one in your words, Mr. Kandil. It's a very, very delighted art, a part in the Egypt's life. Another part would like to speak about the, some people who are with the powers, I mean the old powers, I would like to take your opinion in this regard. He is one of your countryside, Mahal Cobra. He fell down. He was very bad when he accepted the Ministry of Culture as a Minister of Culture when he took this area, Mr. Gaber Mahfouz. When the political regime was very, very uh, working against the people. And after a few days, he get out. Would you like to explain to us this opinion? Your opinion about this period? Okay. Actually, it's a suddenly question. Dr. Gaber Asfour, he is not my friend, but he is my ch childhood mate. We were playing together in the street, me and Minister Gaber Asfour, Minister of Culture in Egypt. We encouraged him and we informed him that he is older than us and he is our professor. I remember that I was wondered that when he accepted this ministry of, uh, as a minister under the power of Mubarak, everybody knows that Mubarak is a region going to die. I called him at night and I told him, now you are giving, get over our childhood days. Why? Why you accept this position? The people are dying in the square with a huge number of young men against Mubarak. Why you go with him? Do you think and do you accept to take this ministry on the blood of this young man? Actually, I did not understand what did he say at the time. He said, I love that man. He has a lot of things for Egypt. He saved us from many, many things. And his word, he spent a long time, and he spent a lot of words, words to me. But I can't believe what did he say. I asked him, do you agree what you do? He said, and everybody stands in the cross of the road. Can you save his boat against thinking? Or we going thinking with him? In fact, he did not see the story like that. He thought, and everybody thought, and this is the uprising is going to just for a short time or temporary, and the Egyptian region is strong and can accept that one, and can resist that one. And he is going to destroy that, that those people, young men, because during the first days and first, first address to his, President Mubarak, when they said 300, 600 people were died in the streets, and when Mubarak spoke to them, he gave them the very beautiful faces, and he never keep out and get out from the powers. He try. This means that these people has nothing to him, and after that four months. 
I remember four months ago when the grandson of the President Mubarak died, how the Egyptian people were very, very sad and very passionate to him. And never, nobody cares. And even Mubarak himself never answer us and never give us a piece of information about that. Actually, Mr. Jabra Asfour realized that one later on, unfortunately, he did not say any word for, and for the uh, revolution acted. And he said because of the clash happened between him and the cabinet members. When he said this, is, this members, this is a ministry of the cabinet of the people, not for the ministers. And they said, no, this is for the National Democratic Party, not for the people. So that after that, he resigned. And I believe it happened, very, it made a very big problem between him and the power. In fact, the revolution principles had a very big effect on ourselves. Many, many people say that the, the Egyptian people are ugly people and nobody know, and very ambiguous people and nobody knows when they come uprising and may, when they are quiet. When you look around ourselves, ourselves, when we go here and there, we see the revolutions and we found them angry since the taxi driver after the professor, everybody's angry. Everywhere you can find uh, aggressive and aggression. They are very sad. No one like that region. We don't know who is the monitor that's going to move and monitor this area and this case. Nobody knows. And we accepted that position. And we, we believed that the workers and workmen, they will make revolution sooner. And I'm coming from Mahal al Kobra, and the Mahal al Kobra has a very big uh, number of uh, workmen. They are the only people who can make revolutions, actually. So after that, we, there were revolution, a big revolution for them. During I was in the, my uh, school, prep school, there was a revolution. My young youth, it was revolution. Everywhere there, there is revolution. All of we can live among police troops. I thought that the workers or the workmen will make revolution sooner. We expected that the starvation revolution coming from outside the country or outside the city, Cairo city. It has a lot of people who are living inside tents, more than 65% living in very non, uh, we can say homeless people. And they are very eager to start up and to work up against the powers. But actually this revision never come from that areas. It came from ed very educated people, who very well educated people. The, the main way was the Facebook, and it was a very, very good uh, way, and this mean make the revolution up. And it, it looks like small islands, isolated islands, everybody speaks to the other in very small rooms, chatting rooms. By the Facebook, the, the Egyptians, the Egyptians headed by Wa'il Ghunim try to change these communications to gathering communication for the human beings and for the Egyptian people to guide them to start the revolution. And we call it the revolution of the youth. Later on, let's speak about I will move now to Dr. Rabbi. With reg you are engaged with uh, Palestinian revolution in 17s, and you did a research about this one before coming back to biography in 1990. You wrote about uh, Sayyidah from Tel Aviv, 
whoever study your uh, novels will notice is there any hope for a new revolution I would like to say there is a question it's very impor important with regard to uh, Palestine we cannot just suggest what is the future for Palestine. Our struggle against the uh, Israeli army so that it was our tank, first tank that we took from and go on with. And we tried many times to read, reread the past through the main stations during our history life. And it was one of the reasons that uh, when I reached the 50, I tried to look behind me and what I did in my last life. Once I found that it's very distinguished way, I, I found that child, I was a child in the uh, 1948, I became a refugee after three years. I lived in a camping. I was prisoned for a long time in two Arab countries. I came to the Cairo, and after 40 years, I came back again to Cairo. And I spent, I spent a long time in the prison again in Cairo. I passed by with, with uh, with a not official passport since I got the official document from the Palestine power. It was a very big problem for myself to move from here and there. And I have a big fa family. I have a wife and two kids. In other way, in my life, I found all my people, Palestinian people coming in my life are the same way. There are a lot of people who are living here and there in the camping in, from Palestine. They are fighters who are Palestinians. Also, I was a fighter. I never shoot before, but I was a fighter. That's because of that I try to write about my life and my Palestinian life. And what I'm, what I'm expecting in the future, I can say that I, I was not born in the past. The lady from Tel Aviv is a very uh, attractive way. Actually, my friend has given me, attracted my attention to that. When Hamas and Gaza Strip, and my story is going to write a little bit about the life in the Palestine sectors and Gaza sector strip during the withdrawal of 2005. And also Hamas tried to explain, to review the issue that how the people and the writer given feelings and passion to the readers and in an artistic way to the readers I, I can't say in the productive way, but what we have it, and the, story, the hero of this story is he can draw a very big scene to the people to read about that there is militias or the guerrilla troops around the Palestinian people, and Hamas also will face the same problems. This is in this side. On the other side, I would like to point out it's not in the direct way that the, we can say the uh, investigations or expectations. The Palestinian revolutions, I can say, we have spent a, a lot of four stages in our life. Uh, refugees stage and homeless stage and when Ghassan Kanafani has mentioned this one in his stories, and you can find this Gabra Ibrahim Gabra in his stories. Also, Walid Masoud has wrote about our refugees, 
and second resistance stage, and we found several aspects of literature during that area. Finally, we have seen the stage and how to get for the PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, try to get a new stage of life for the Palestinian people that we can say is return or sir, return literature. We try to go back again to Yasser Arafat, the ages. And we, since the, we can say the conflict happened between the reality and imaginations, how the people who came back again to their home, he never found their homeland. Unfortunately, we don't see any, any way, but we, now we can say Tel Aviv lady was happened in what, what happened for the identity after the revolution. What happened exactly for that? And the people themselves, did, do they, did they have their identity? Or the people who are living in UK or Britain or Great Britain or Canadian or this is the same Palestinian person who are living in the Western Bank? I don't think so. So that the writers and here and there, they have a lot of aspects of writings. So that they are speaking about the identity. The identity is very important point in our stories who are living in, abro in abroad or not. And the most important thing also is a return back again to, to their, our homeland and try to discover exploration of what happened before. Now we have two personalities. The person who tried to come back again to the past or he tried to found a house or a homeland to live on or another personality who tried to come back again or to go on with the real life and he tried to go back again to Gaza Strip or to regain his identity. Thank you very much. Come back again to Mr. Abraham al-Majid. Since two years ago, you have wrote stories uh, Friday and every week. And it ha this story happened in the visual work. There is a group on the Facebook that explains that they are talking about the uh, non-illegal elections and the revolution of Egypt happened the 25th of January. And it was the main mean of the revolution. Is that was it suddenly or not? Actually, I can't predict that I'm expecting the revolution will happen sooner. But I can say, as my friend said, Mr. Muhammad said, that we try to brought this revolution in front of the people from the actions happened from the employees or in the other people around us. Generally, in my life, I was around my people, and I tried to, to, to love the Egyptian people, as, as I mentioned before. I was present also, and also, I was also not against the people, against the region, but I tried to go on with what's going on in a literature way. And each story, or each narration, shall, shall I do? I try to find out, I have the risk, I have the adventure. All I say, I try to find the freedom in the life and I try to find the freedom in my handwritings. So that I make artificial feelings in my writings to the readers. Since three years ago, I try to become closer and approach to the young men as because of my work. So I read their works and I write about them. Also, I write introductions about the books for the young men. I don't feel any aggression against any person or violence, but I feel lovely with them. So, so I love to be appear with the people and who have very good spirit with the young men. 
and to support the newcomers in the literature field. Once, I tried to write a story about Alexandria. I wrote about Saudi Arabia, about, about, about the uh, lighting fish. I wrote, I wrote about Oman citadel. I wrote about the desert in the western areas, Marriott Lake. So I wrote about the nature. And there is in the individual unusual feelings or words. Especially the internet. Everybody can say, can, can spend a long time there. Why I should not write about it? Why I don't go in with? I try to go in with this. I can write about a house or building or a street or even a tree. But why don't write about this unvisual city? So that I made a website. A lady makes this website and try to, to ask the people to come and to visit this website. This website especially to write and to express the feelings about them. And to, to make a good feelings and happiness, friendship between them. After that, what they can do together. In, in fact, in fact, the website has been happened. Uh, it was Friday.com. Friday means it's a real day in the week. It's used Friday.com. And everybody try to go in with and try to visit that. Only Egyptians. He doesn't want any other nationality to speak and very feel, to feel very free to express about their feelings. And you know, actually, ladies, men, and young men, young girls, and young ages, teenagers, a lot of people who visited that website, Friday.com. And the problem is only for expression. Just we can say fat father or expressions, that the, the word they can say it. And we have saw in this website the prisoners, we have seen the police, politis, politis, politicians, we have seen in the website uh, lesbians and uh, prostitutes, uh, very Islamic people, well, professors, or like Mr. G well, Gabriel, many, many people actually were visited that website, and several people have visited web the website. And after that, they get agreed together to make chatting every Friday. And during the chatting every Friday, everybody can see. Everybody express their feeling and very miserable cases and stories. But generally, they make this, their stress, they say these words. And in the Friday, one of them dies or get married or get out or like the fate. Once it happens, all things and non expecting actions happened. Getting out, dying people, and w newcomers, or marriage, or whatever. It looks like a, a door opened, like the fate for the people as real life. So that the, when the revolution happened, it happened. And every Friday, we see a, a president, a minister, cabinet completely changed. So we, we are the heroes of the Facebook, the, the, you know, the expecting that what will happen in the future. And everybody was happy, very big because of his expectations. And we are expecting Gaddafi Friday will come sooner. I don't think about the revolution to be happened exactly what I thought and what I wrote about it. But it's, the, the, the rules actually is very, are very strong. But my spirit says the people's who will come from several things and several locations. Not only, I'm not protecting, I'm expecting what will happen in the future. I cannot speculate what will happen in the future. But it's by chance, it happens every Friday. Every Friday they have gathering, every Friday they have changing cabinet, every Friday they have th things to do. I still two questions for our audience. And after that, We can say a, a cloudy day in the western side, it expect, expressed about a miserable story or love story, since uh, through the miserable girls, and it's a very beautiful story, actually. 
I was very happy and expected that you will get a word. So that word used melancholic or asiania. Yes. And it's a very passionate way. Do you think about the 25th of January revolution? You were writing the same feelings and same passionate to the people? I wish I could free as the revolution. And I would like to comment. I would like to comment. And my Mr. Ibrahim said that Gaddafi said he will leave on Friday too. The story of cloudy day of in the Western Bank, it's for, for the Egyptian history since 100 years ago during that area. The Egyptians tried to find their identity. And before that, there were the Egyptians just numbers of huge numbers of people homeless and coming in and out. And nobody knows who are these people. They said 100,000 people were died during the Suez Channel digging, or 50,000 were died, dead during so and so on the wars or Mexican wars or whatever. Huge numbers of people dying. During that area, the Egyptians tried to find, they are, they are not just numbers, they are persons, they are personalities, they are names, they are stores. They're, they try to find themselves, to discover themselves through many things and many events happened during that area in Egypt. The British occupation, it came to kill the revolution, uh, farmer's revolution headed by Ahmad Arabi. He was the farmer's leader. So that revolution came to kill this revolution. I think the Egyptian people felt the dangerous of these people who are coming here. So that they try to raise up many, many questions and many things, many issues happen to the, themselves. Even Mustafa Kamil, one of the revolution leaders and political leaders in Egypt, when he said, if I'm not Egyptian, I try to be an Egyptian. Yes, it is a, a passionate way. And he said that he tried to save as much as he can from the identity. So what I was um, astonished to say during that words, the Egyptian people try to change again to now just numbers. They were thinking in the boats, in the ships, in the Red Sea. I tried to find them are burned already in the trains. <coughs> Sorry. I tried to find themselves also dying under the rocks of the mountains in Egypt cities. They are just numbers, just very draft numbers. And the region tried to, to do are the same against their people, against their properties. I tried to wrote about this one. When I wrote this one, I was very angry because of the Egyptian future. So that it was very hard for myself to write about it. I tried to, to finish, finalize all of this area, era. We have waited for 30 years for that day. Not only for this day, but more than 60 years we waited since the military received the powers in Egypt. I try to find all this area has already finished. And we are a civilian country. We have a special freedom. We have our dreams. We have our feelings. I think this revolution is going to change. Many things happened. In 23rd of July, 1952, when Najib Mahfouz stopped to write about for eight years, because he doesn't know what he can write, because he doesn't know what happened actually and what are the changes in the society, we will take a long time to stop and to think, to realize where we are going to do. The revolution happened in Egypt, in many country, Arab countries, but actually it's up till now it's never fin finished. Let's wait and see what's our fate and what's our future. I would like to ask a question for you. 
for a phenomena happened and clear in the Arabian and the Arab roads. Some of them, what you have wrote, you have wrote one of the one of the stories that going to be uh, it will be to be awarded soon, and it gives our information and concentration for the others, for the other pe third person. Do, do you think this? And the second party is away from the. Arabian feelings, or Arabian countries, or everybody is in the in abroad, and he think about himself, and there is no problem with the West, even Israel, and the issue is, there is a big problem inside the Arab society, and the Arab society cannot, they are away from this development. What do you think about this? For myself, uh, the other person or the, the the Western people in myself looks like Alexandria. I, I lived in Alexandria since my childhood. We lived together in the same houses in very beautiful city, and we deal very peaceful way together. The, it's, it will never, never be to terrorists and never be a touristic location. But actually, I saw the peaceful life with the foreigners, foreigners and the others. We deal together, either Western or Greece or whatever. <coughs> we loved after the Second World War. We, we left together after the Suez Canal. And the, the Egyptian revolutions, really, uh, I can't say the Palestinian, the Egyptian revolutions make the peoples in the Arab world try to call the Western or the others. This is the words of the religious people, but the human people, normal human people say they have the dream, to dream, to dream, to, to see relations with the others. Because it, he, he was, we can say, the Western with, with little bit against them, with pity against them. In 1952, revolutions in Egypt, Egypt has a, a good credit of 60 million sterling pounds. But right now, Egyptian banks has a trillions, lost trillions of money. One of our friends says, yes, had one, one billion point six U.S. dollars as a wealth of one of the Egyptian person. He's a friend of Mubarak. I don't think that we can find the, an American person has the same power or the same, so that we believe and we think to try to find our relations with the Western. And I mean, the, uh, huge buildings and very luxury buildings for the ministers and the people who are living there. I don't think this is very easy. To, re, to be rich, it became of the uh, state security. It was very beautiful locations. It was burned, actually. It was taken from Egyptian people. It became a prisons for the Egyptian people under the ground. For myself, the Western people, they are not enemy, really. They are friends. So that we believe that we can feel, live peacefully be, with each other. And before the revolution, we had it. Really, before the war, really, we were occupied, but we, there were democracy. But right now, we don't have any democracy in our life. So the relation with the people and the Western people, sometimes everybody looked to him and they give information against the Western to be an enemy, but actually the, 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 the facts are not like that. He is a friend to us. This is my opinion. And you, our interest with the Western, it looks like self-defense. We are accused already to, that of all the issues happened all over the world because of the Muslims or Arabs. When I was outside and hear about any explosion happened or killings issue or robbery, 
the first say that I please, my God, don't make this person an Arab person. Please, I hope that. So that everybody right now against the Arabs, everybody right now against the words. But nobody feels what's going on. We try from our literatures, from our hands, from our words, we write to, to make the face, I mean, a good face of the Arabs or the good face of the Western. Not through the killing, not through the terrorists. We suffered a lot from the Arab regions, more than the occupations in our homelands, actually. I think we suffered a lot of things during the ambiguous enemy. In time of our occupation, that it's a clear enemies. But if the National Democratic Party comes as an enemy, you never feel that he is an enemy. He's ambiguous enemy. And nobody knows who is enemy, who is a not enemy. In spite of he has the same powers and he is the same nationality, but he is doing the same actions that of the enemy is doing. This is our problem. I feel, I try to feel free against that and to be, to be free towards the others, towards our Western and foreigners, and to get rid of our complicated words that we are doing to. So I can't say any additions to, to my friends here, but I, what I can say that the Western, as for the Palestinians, is the the enemy, I mean the, the Israeli people, not the Western people in Europe or America or somewhere. We are dealing with them face to face. Except who has a take part from our homeland. Our problem is Israel. How can I summarize this one as I my hero said, I am the existence. I am the ex existence of the people who are here, but the enemy is the existence who are worried us. So, so that my uh, concentration in this story, that to change and to discover how the people here and how can explain this area, uh, this uh, point to the readers, and don't look to the Israel people as ideological or just words to say. And many, many locations in Arab countries, and there is Israel is here and there as a special and understood location. Everybody understands what's going on. I tried many times to put this enemy and his right human being I tried to moderate, uh, to express this personality. I tried to, how he changed into a, a violent way <coughs> that the others try to every time to change. And the final point that I would like to say, the effect of the general's actions on the Palestinian people very abbreviation. On in 15, 15th of this March, there's a meeting with with a meeting with the Palestinian people on the internet. But you will see these people are very complicated and very conflicted between each other. There is a big part between the powers in Palestine and Hamas and Fatah and the powers in Palestine. And the people try to fill down the powers. The people fail, won't fail down the powers. This is a war in Arab countries right now because of the spoil. The powers themselves are spoiled. And all the people are already spoiled in the powers so that we have another priority. Now the people say that the people want to finalize this occupation. 
it comes more than any other country in Israel. So exploring this issue, it takes a long time. Really, it, it needs a long time to see what will happen, especially for Egypt in the future. And all of this, how the literature and the writers and authors will be affected from this revolution. Let's see, and also the Palestinian people also will be affected surely. I'm expecting, <coughs> sorry, I'm expecting this will happen sooner and, and later on. And this, this vision will be changed. And the last point I would like to say, and the, the Jewish story, our Israeli story and the Palestinian story, which is always, always happens, always coming on the stage. We have every year, we have meetings to say about, about Holocaust and others. I never, I never say, I never uh, display, I mean, disappear my pity towards these Jewish. But also we have to say make, for the coming generations, our literature, how good is that? to deal with the relation with the others, not only the Western, but also the Israeli, how to deal with others in peaceful way, from in and from out, and to re reform the story, a Palestinian story towards the others. Thank you. I'd like to thank you very much for this uh, speaking dialogue. Thank you very, very much for your words and your novels that you wrote about. I'm sure that when we sit with you, we sit with the history. Not only a part of history, but uh, several aspects of histories. Thank you very much for you. My question is, is there any texts or uh, band, band uh, texts or novels, or what are these novels that, or why? Okay, these questions uh, for us or for the others? Yes, it's for you. If you have any uh, novels not published or banned. In the last year, in the Kuwait exhibition, more than 15 Arabic writers were prohibited to issue, to issue their books. I was one of them. I have prohibited to issue three novels. It was the first time for me to write on the prohibited books. I don't like to write prohibited books. When I faced this problem, I said I have to say frankly. Since 1990, I didn't say anything about all this novel and why they prohibited this novel. I prohibited as well to, to issue the Virgin Mary. And after one year, I published this novel in Egypt. And I don't like to talk about this subject at all. Muhammad has as well. Muhammad as well has the same issue regarding the prohibited books. And many many novels prohibited to be published even in the Gulf. As you say now, we can publish everything by internet and we can do everything on the free websites.
And there is, as you see on the screen, there's many uh, novels are prohibited as well. With regard to the Egyptian revolution, was it possible to happen before now? I ask myself, were we able to do this before this, before 30 years? Let's answer these two questions. With regard to identity, I would like to say, regarding the critic in our, an Arab world, when you, f when you look It's, it is a percentage literature. There's people who take care of another because he is existed in this place. Like being in Palestine or Alexandria. Muhammad al mansi novel is identity. He's talking about identity itself. In general, what happened is talking about the political events that happened in the Arab world. It was surprisingly, which express kinds of suffer. When KSA, Egypt, and against the Soviet Union since that time. And the Wapi uh, movement happened. And so that we have to, to work with the others. Since we believe that the novels expressed about the others or the Western people in the novels expressed like Tawfiq al-Hakim and Yahya Haqqi when he goes uh, in abroad and comes back again to the country. The, the novel includes the identity and the non-identity person. So Mr. Mohammed Mansi says, this person is already obliged. And some people can write in this one, but let some of them. But actually, it became obligatory action. And also, we are accused from the others as an enemy. We are not an enemy. The enemies are the, who are coming to take the lands so that we try to recognize that one and try to explain what's going on in our novels and our stories. And we write about the identity everywhere. And this is my opinion. As for the revolutions, can you explain, please? It, it, it was obligatory. This revolution happened earlier, since 30 years ago. But actually, in a way or another, we can say Mubarak was a monster who includes everything, who takes over, who controls everywhere, everything. I have a personal experience in this field, and it's a story, an old story. Since I saw the numbers of the killed people in Al Tahrir Square, I said we are the people who are committed this one. So we were very peaceful towards Mubarak as, long, as much as we can. When I was a doctor in the countryside, one of the villages in Minya, M M Mubarak was a very effective person. And there, there is no elections, no referendum. Only one person, one judge, one ruler, one president. And after that, the, the freedom, we made a committee for a referendum of the president. We had 500 vo vo voice as 500 cards. This means that these people already elected you. At that day, no one came inside in my clinic. Even the patients or the sick people from the headache, from the body ache, never comes to my 
clinic. Also, there, there is no car accident, no road traffic accident at all in my clinic. I wondered what's going on in the day. I tried to read about what's going on in the day. It was very, very long day and very boring. I saw the 500 election cards. What can you do on these cards? After four o'clock in the afternoon, before the clothing, the, uh, the boxes, I wondered to see the officers and people who are coming here and to f coming to my clinic. Everything said, everything is okay. I said, no, no one came here. Why, what are you doing? Why we should wait for what? Let's make it, right, right, yes, yes for the president, right, yes for the president. So that I was a young doctor, I was very, very, very afraid, I scared, what's going to myself? Yes, I wrote yes to the president, but I, I said in myself, okay, it's already elections and illegal elections, anyway, at least some of them are already real, reality. I wrote 450 said yes to the president, and 50 people said no to the president. I'm sure 50 person never affect. And I went to do that. I went to, to the police people, to the central committee station, and with, with the judge. When he saw me, yes, all unanimously, unanimously. No, he said, I told him no. 450 yes and 50. No, why? Oh my gosh, 50 people said no. No, please open the books again. And they change again to, our, to say yes to the president. All these stories really explains how our generation made this monster and was very strong against the people with the president. And we spent a lot of years and years to make this minister. I hope to don't make it anymore. Mr. Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed had mentioned uh, Najib Mahfouz in some answers. I'd like to ask him: Is there any, uh, is there any point of weakness in the literature, or feeling sadness or ugly when the Najib Mahfouz has mentioned Egypt in his stories as a, a narrator? And we are in the 20th, 21st century. Is, this, is he uh, angry or uh, sad for his writings? Because we don't see his, uh, we didn't see, when he didn't see this revolution, is there any time to think about it? As uh, this question, for example? We hope to see not only Najib Mahfouz only, but also several writers and authors who are like him. When the revolution happened, I said, thanks God to see this revolution and to have feeling with this revolution by sight. Actually, a lot of people angry and crying because it was very, very long time we were against this revolution. You know, since the CCCP or the Soviet Union fell down, it's a very big democracy around the world. The, it came towards the Latin America, and they said the behind doors of the states, and all the democracy, our bureaucracy movements. After the, this democracy came down to Africa, and all the black countries became a democratic. All of the people has changed, and in spite of these changes, and this, and these uh, changes never come to Arab world. It was very strange and very quiet, very strong, and also very, very rocky people. And the governors were rocky people. Never changed, never feel, and we cannot change these people. Najib Mahfouz was dreaming of this day. And he tries, Najib, Yusuf Idris also, and all the great writers of the Arab, and the dream still, because the changes never true and comes very slowly, wins, and moving from country to country. We, this, we concentrate this country is going to be, we, at least we take a part of these wins, changing wins, after we lost many, many 
great revolution. We 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 for we lost the industrial revolution. We do, we lost the agricultural revolution. Unfortunately, we are suffering a lot, and at least we try to reach as much as we can from this revolution, our developments. Thank you very much, everybody here, and our guests for and all the your interference, your comments, and also your attendance today here. Thank you very much for your coming. Uh, and see you again. Thank you very much. All, all the, thank you.